Corned beef, lifesaver or planet destroyer? How can something that wreaks havoc on your heart health also be such a steadfast historical staple? When you hear Libby's, you probably think of pumpkin pie, a Thanksgiving Day staple across the United States. After all, the brand's popular canned pumpkin accounts for 85% of all the canned pumpkin in the world. But despite the mind-blowing statistics, pumpkin is not what made the company what it is today. It was instead the can of corned beef that you probably have stocked away in your kitchen pantry. In 1868, less than five years after the Civil War ended, Archibald McNeil and brothers, Arthur and Charles Libby, started Libby, McNeil & Libby, offering one product, canned beef and brine, aka canned corned beef. For the next three decades or so, the company was satisfied to keep selling canned corned beef. It was only in 1904 that Libby's started selling canned sauerkraut. Three years later, condiments and fruits were added to its product offerings. Today, there are over 150 products that the company sells, including juices, ketchup, sausages, and more. But none of it would have been possible without its first hit product, their canned corned beef. Cured meats, like salami and other standard cold cuts, are a common meal option. But curing meat, which means treating it with a blend of salt, sugar, and nitrites to extend its shelf life, wasn't popular post-1867. According to the book, A History of the City of Chicago, Its Men and Institutions, meat was cured only during winter until then. So what happened? In the summer of 1867, a certain gentleman named Arthur A. Libby showed that one didn't have to wait for the temperatures to dip to start curing the meat. It could be a year-round production. Libby's was founded shortly after this revelation and set the standards for preserving and packing meat. The beef was stuffed into cans and sealed airtight, preserving the meat. It was a stroke of genius that changed the industry. Libby's outgrew their original facility in just a few years. Eventually, it expanded to the then widely popular meatpacking district in Chicago, the Union Stockyards. A number of meat processing plants, pens, and slaughterhouses came together to occupy a 450-acre swath of land that, according to NPR, saw a whopping 13 million livestock sold annually. It also brought in about half a million tourists each year. And while the idea of animal slaughter as a tourist attraction seems bizarre today, it was a big deal then and Libby's and its corned beef were a part of this important history. According to A History of Chicago, Libby's operations spanned about 10 and a half acres in the multi-billion dollar livestock plant, with 2,500 employees helping churn out as many as 5 million cans of meat per month by 1901. Over the years, with the construction of highways and the launch of refrigerated trucks, the many processing plants clustered in the area for easy access to the railroad decided to disperse out to different locations, and in doing so, they left what was once the pride of Chicago to be demolished in 1971. Ever wonder why canned corned beef comes in a rectangular can? Many canned corned beef brands seem to prefer it over a simple round tin for their meat, and all of them were in some ways copying Libby's ingenious idea. In 1875, the founding trio of Libby's introduced the rectangular can to pack the corned beef that they had been making since 1869. Food Timeline says that the can, co-invented by Arthur Libby and William J. Wilson, came with its own little key to remove the can lid. No fidgeting with can openers when using this one. It's such a pain to open Ow. that can. Then it spills and makes a mess. It was a hit, and according to the brand's website, it was the packaging that made it popular. But the real reason why the can avoided curves was because it was designed keeping the military in mind. When transporting stacks of cans to army stations, it was easier to efficiently stack rectangular cans one on top of the other, rather than round ones, ensuring the best use of space. Opting for canned corned beef, no matter what the form, means that you are not being very environmentally friendly. According to Green Choice Now, Libby's corned beef has a very high carbon and water footprint. But it's not just the brand in particular. Beef and lamb are associated with high greenhouse gas emissions compared to, say, pork or chicken. A little more than two pounds of beef generates over 130 pounds of greenhouse gas emissions per UK climate change website Carbon Brief. And that's not the only bad news. Just one pound of beef requires 1,847 gallons of water for production, according to the Water Footprint Network. Then, of course, there is the cattle feed, which requires more land and resources. Per a study published in a scientific journal called Animals, 13 pounds of feed is required for a quarter pound hamburger. To make all the food available for the herds of cattle, large areas of forests are cleared to be used as pasture, a practice that affects ecosystems and aggravates climate change. And that can lead to a pretty bleak future. 
millions of acres laid waste by thoughtlessness and neglect. Back in the late 1880s, you would have been considered cool if you casually brought out a bright red can of Libby's corned beef for your guests. Not just because of the uniquely shaped can, but that the product was world famous. It had earned a name in international expositions. According to Libby's, its corned beef bagged the highest gold medal award in Paris back in 1878, even before the Statue of Liberty was gifted by France to the US, or the Eiffel Tower rose on the Paris skyline. Over the years, Libby's expanded beyond Chicago throughout the rest of the United States, and by the 1920s and 1930s, it had built plants in England, Poland, France, and Germany. Some Libby's corned beef cans have been in brutal places. For starters, all of the American troops in World War I had a can of Libby's corned beef in their emergency ration kit, per Libby's International. If you think about it, there couldn't have been an easier way for the Army folks to consume 130 calories conveniently. Naturally, the product was popular among those on the battlefield. Turns out it wasn't just used by American troops, but by armies across the globe. The company's contribution to war efforts extends beyond feeding the Army. Libby's played its part in getting the world back on its feet after World War II by establishing plants in England, the Netherlands, and Germany that can produce employment opportunities. First, the good news. Corned beef contains a lot of good stuff that your body needs for functioning well like protein, vitamin B12, iron, and selenium, which Healthline says is necessary for the growth of thyroid hormones. The bad news, however, is that a serving of Libby's corned beef contains 530 milligrams of sodium, which, if you didn't already guess, is a lot. In other words, too much corned beef is not good for your health. The only consolation is that Libby's also sells corned beef with 25% less sodium in it. With this one, you can enjoy a few extra servings without worrying as much about your heart. Today, it's possible to have breakfast in Paris and dinner in New York on the same day, in part because of the pioneer aviator Charles Lindbergh. While Lindbergh's claim to fame was completing the first solo flight trip from New York to Paris, crossing the Atlantic Ocean in about 34 hours. The National Air and Space Museum says that he also explored different international routes alongside his partner, Anne Morrow Lindbergh. But what has that got to do with Libby's? Turns out, Libby's canned corned beef was among the emergency rations that the Lindberghs carried with them on their flight adventures, per the pioneers of Flight Gallery. This means Libby's corned beef was probably part of the very first flight that charted the path from Newfoundland to Europe. But the product, it turns out, went on more adventures than one. According to Libby's, cans of corned beef were also part of Admiral Richard Byrd's expeditions to the North Pole in 1905. There is little else that equals the feeling of having ready-to-eat food after a long day of work. Libby's guarantees that comfort. The meat that's inside the can is cooked and ready to be consumed directly out of the can. You don't even have to heat it. While scooping it out with a spoon or fork is one way to eat it, you could also turn the block of meat into cubes or slices and serve them as hors d'oeuvres. Whether you jazz it up with some seasoning or opt for an already flavored one, like corned beef with smoke, is up to you. Corned beef can be a star ingredient in your turnovers, sandwich, or hash. There are tons of good ways to eat canned corned beef, whether it's with an egg or in a delicious appetizer. Plenty of recipes use it as the star of the show. And given its versatility and pre-cooked nature, it won't take long to turn a can into a full entree that's as fancy as you want to get.